scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I don't know why I sense the healing anointing. That's why I began to sing these songs. Songs of His presence. Just responding to the anointing. I believe that God is healing people right now. I believe that God is healing people. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome. In this place, have your way. Sing, Lord, you are welcome. Lord, you are welcome. In this place, Lord, you are welcome. In this place, Lord, you are welcome. Tell him what you came here for tonight. 
is our ever-present help. There are people who have come from all over. We have families who have come from great distances. God will not leave you to go back the same. No, you didn't come to meet an idol. You didn't come to meet those dead gods that are lifeless and have no power to change. Ye are come unto Mount Zion. The living God is in the midst of his people. Tell him your desire. Change us. Heal us. Set us free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Just hug and greet one another. Be seated. God will visit you tonight in a mighty way. I assure you. That presence that can change, that presence that can transform you, can build you. He said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. And so I'd like for your heart to be open because God is not doing the same thing. Not when his presence is in this place. We thank him for the gift of his presence. Inexplainable but undeniable. Men can write books on faith. Men can write books on prosperity. But how can you describe his presence? visit you tonight and your life will never be the same. We believe we believe Lord we believe Lord we that cometh unto him must believe that he is Hebrews 11 verse 6 and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him every time you come before his presence you must realize that there is a reward for seeking him you are not wasting your time for he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain He's called the Prince of Peace. When he comes, he truly gives you peace. Peace is not just quietness and rest. He gives you peace. He said, peace I give you. My peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives. His presence brings peace. His presence brings Every time you behold his glory, you see how small those mountains are. This is a sign that you are in his presence. Lord, we thank you. I have a very serious message tonight for the body of Christ. 
very very serious it's a very prophetic message hallelujah I want to encourage you to be ambassadors not only ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven but help your brothers and sisters and families there are many messages that have come out from here that offer guidance direction prophetic accuracy and insight to help a lot of people we made our messages free ministries sell tapes and messages and make hundreds of millions from it but the time for that will come we are more interested in getting the agenda of the spirit to the nations as many who will be interested in hearing let me tell you something without missing words we have a message we're not just crouching for what to say for the Bible says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. The Spirit is speaking. Helping us to have an understanding of times and seasons. To comprehend the things of the Spirit. And we thank God because he is granting us grace to build according to pattern. We are that uncompromising remnant. Who will not defile ourselves with the meat of Babylon that has corrupted many great men. We have chosen the path of the spirit and in spite of the pain it will bring, we will endure. We are this army determined to stand until we become all that he has destined us to be. And let me tell you something. It may take a while, but as surely as the morning comes after a night, a day will come. It will take long. But I have an assurance that a time will come when the word of God will be scarce. And whoever has that word will run with it. The price you are paying now is nothing compared to the price men will pay for their ignorance. This is why God is exposing us to his truth. Never take for granted the things that God is doing. This is not a church. You have your church where you worship on Sunday. This is an agenda. This is a program. This is a prophetic agenda. This is what God is doing. Hallelujah. So I like to prepare your heart. Never take for granted. Don't just come casually. For every time he calls you to a banquet, a table has been prepared before you. Hallelujah. And if you will believe him enough to realize you are not wasting your time, then the time of laughter will come. The Bible says it is as soon as Zion travails. The time of traveling is painful. Every great man knows that the birth of anything valuable is painful. Some of you had to trek to come here. Some of you probably have not eaten anything. There are families, this family, this whole family, father, mother, and all the children left Kogi State this morning to come. What are they looking for? For as soon as Zion travails, she will put forth herself. I see Barista from Abuja. What you think people just come? You see, this is where what men of God don't get. We celebrate these things and just think this is a sign of increase in ministry. This is nonsense. It's my desire that this place becomes a portal where. The voice of the spirit will not be scarce that we will not become part of the noise making preachers talking junks who are out of alignment with the things of the spirit that God will put his word he said he gave me the scroll and I did eat it and he said go and prophesy hallelujah that every time you come here, you will hear the counsel of the Spirit. Not the opinion of a man. Not the program, a doctrinal program of a sect or a religion. But that you will find God. This is why we depend so much in the Holy Spirit. 
it's not diabolism we have come to realize that he's the only one who can help us fulfill this agenda we are perpetually inadequate without him that's why you hear us talk so much about the holy spirit and a lot of people have a serious problem with that but jesus sent us the spirit to make us like him He's the Holy Ghost. He's the Spirit of the Living God. He's the Holy Ghost. The scepter of the King of Kings. Yeah. He's the Holy Ghost. The seal of the age to come. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. Jesus told us, he said, and when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He will bring to your remembrance all the things that I've taught you, and he will show you. He will take up the things that are of the Father and show you. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer. I will show you. Not common things, but great and mighty things that you know not. An apocalypse, an unveiling of that which has been hidden. The Bible tells us that there are certain mysteries that have been hidden from the church. Appointed for a kind and a type of people. And Paul begins to tell, to tell the Corinthian church, he said, eye has not seen. That means no dimension of prophetic eye before now will be able to access those archives. They are under lock and key, have been sealed until the time appointed. The Bible says the prophets kept stretching through their prophetic eyes to look into those times, but it was not given unto them. He said, neither has any ear heard. What God has prepared for them that love him. But the Bible says these mysteries will be granted unto a generation. Not necessarily just because of our prayer lives. It is part of the prophetic mandate of the spirit for a type and a kind of generation. Hallelujah. That generation, that prophetic and apostolic generation that will step in in beauty and light there is a kind of revelation and access into deep spiritual things in other words the knowledge and the access we've had hitherto is good but it cannot sustain us in these new seasons that we're stepping into and so there is a need to cry unto God to say Lord let there be an opening of the seal so that those things that have been hidden aforetime, that the scrolls will be open and the seals will be broken. So that these things that have been hidden, that even the great prophets could not access, would it be open unto a generation. But it will always take men who will defy the status quo and begin to press and say, Lord, show us, open our eyes. Open our eyes that we may see. We are tired of recycling messages that have stopped people from moving higher. Oh Lord, that you will break that seal. And the Lord says, if you call unto me, out of that revelation. For when the people of God were in captivity in Babylon, Daniel understood by books that after 70 years it was the time of their liberation and exodus out of babylon and the bible says on the strength of that insight he began to intercede and suddenly gabriel the archangel in service was going to bring the prophetic blueprint he said i gabriel am come to give thee understanding because every time god sends a revelation it is signified by an angel revelations one by one one verse one the bible says the revelation of jesus christ which he gave unto his servant john that he should show unto his servants and he gave it and signified it by his angel 
every time there are angels that convey revelations and guide the safe arrival of those revelations. That's why to every church there were angels assigned. Their job is to make sure that the blueprint of the spirits that have been revealed will arrive safely. The Bible says, while Gabriel was on his way, the prince of the power of the air, the spiritual wickedness that governed the territory of Persia, attempted to stop him. And as he continued traveling, he wouldn't give up. The Bible says, Michael, the archangel, came. And that message was brought. There must be a generation. Ruth Heflin left this prophecy before she went to be with the Lord. She said there is a generation that will reveal the glory of God. It will no longer be church as usual. God is doing a new thing. I'm announcing to you. I've shared it here again and again and I've been criticized for it. The old wine has finished. There is a blowing of a new trumpet. It's not the old. He says, after two days, he will revive us. But on the third day, he will raise us up. There are many people who have gone out of sync with spiritual things. The sounds of the spirit are now strange and foreign to them. Because of all of the benefits that may come with ministry. But let me tell you, there are a people who are determined to stay. He said the Lord will do nothing but reveal his secrets. There are secrets. He will grant you access to do business in deep waters. And you will uncover things. This is what God is training you to become. Happy are you when God finds you faithful. Happy are you when God finds you uncompromising. It takes death. To bring certain dimensions of glory into the earth realm. But happy are you. Hallelujah. I want to share with you very powerfully this night. I want to show you by the spirit of God. Where the church is in the prophetic blueprint of the ages. It's important for us to know. That we are playing prophecy. We are prophecy in motion. Hallelujah. The entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation is an unveiling. An unveiling of prophetic things. Hallelujah. Every story in the Bible. Everything that has been written has its natural meaning. But has its prophetic meaning. Everything. An adumbration of the things that God wants to do. The wedding in Cana, for instance, was a type of the old wine and the new wine that is coming to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. It's very important. Thank you, Jesus. The first thing I want to share with you is the current agenda. Of the kingdom of darkness. I have been very concerned. Please take tonight's teaching very seriously. I have been very concerned. At the deafness of even those who call themselves prophets. I'm going to say some things tonight that will disturb a number of you. To the agenda of the darkness. The Bible says that we be not ignorant. Of the devices. The word devices there means the structure and the methodology. Do not be ignorant. In other words, your ignorance will not become good for you. Do not be ignorant. There is a plot. There is an agenda of darkness. Listen. Every generation and every dispensation has had Satan coming in. To corrupt the things that God would want to do. In the garden of Eden. The Bible says that Satan came in all subtlety. Having been thrown down. There was judgment in heaven the Bible tells us. And Lucifer. That cherub that covereth. Who wanted to arise. He said I will arise and be as the stars of God. 
I want to be God by myself. And the Bible says there was war in heaven. And he fell with a third of the angels. Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. It was his fall and the preceding judgment that led to Genesis 1 verse 2. And the earth was dark and void. Formless. Let me announce to you that hell is not some mystery. I've said it again and again. Hell is right in the earth. Hallelujah. And hell is not just a location, but hell is a spirit. The Bible says death, hell, and the grave will be cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is not demonic. The lake of fire is part of the kingdom of God. It was designed for the judgment of Satan and all who are in fraternity and partnership with him. So there is an agenda. In the days of Noah, the Bible makes us to understand that the fallen angels, because they have the ability to translate themselves, they started translating themselves and intermingling with the daughters of men in an attempt to corrupt the race. That was the agenda of Satan during that dispensation. Hallelujah. When God raised a prophet, Elijah the Tishbite, the Bible tells us that there was a very strange woman, a prophetic type of the mystery Babylon called Jezebel. Every time God has a, an agenda, Satan always has a strategy and a plot. And not knowing it can cause believers severe casualty. When Jesus began to admonish the seven churches that were spread across Asia Minor, a type of the prophetic churches, a, a type of the church age, for every church that he commended, he began to reveal to them the plots of Satan. For certain churches, he began to tell them that there were certain churches that were the churches of Satan, where Satan sat. Others, he warned them that the strategy of the devil is to make men look warm and to say, I have acquired this wealth. In every generation and every prophetic agenda of God, there is a strategy. The Bible says, do not be ignorant. And I want to share with you right now. The strategy that the devil would want to use to cause the sons in light to abort the prophetic agenda that God has for us. You ready? Number one. Deception. 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 Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Look at me. Deception is the art of bringing men into error. Are you listening to me? To bring men into error. To cause a disaligning. To bring men into error. There is a lot. One of the things. One of the biggest problems of the church. And even the church in Nigeria right now. Is the spirit of deception. It's a terrible agenda by the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Bible begins to warn us that this deception can be so great, even the elect can be deceived if care is not taken. There are lots of things going on in our churches and going on in various places. And because many men of God are not standing close to the ark, there's so much deception. Popular things that look nice but are, are orchestrated by the devil. Many doctrines that we uphold today they are the doctrines of the Nicolaitans. Metaphysical doctrines. They look nice. They look great. They inspire us. But they are not of God. How did it become like this? One mentor teaching another. Somebody going for conference and getting it. Somebody sharing his testimony. Deception. Acts chapter 4. God knew that these kinds of things will arise. And it was on account of this that he gave unto men gifts. It's a shame upon the fivefold ministry. 
that we do not even realize why God anointed and carved out the structure of the fivefold ministry. It's not for jamboree, not for competition, not to show which office is greater than which. Are you there? Verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. Those gifts are not talents. Those gifts are people. Now he that has ascended, what is it but he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended, you see that he descended to the lower parts of the earth. Jesus went to hell and the Bible calls it the lower part of the earth. Not the lower part outside the earth. Hallelujah. Verse 11. He gave unto some apostles. Listen please. MOG, listen carefully. He gave unto some apostle. To some prophets. To some evangelists, to some pastors and teachers. Why? For launching, answer me, for building ministries and empires, for celebrating vain accomplishments that have no corresponding effect in the spirit. The Bible says, for the perfecting, equipping, maturing, building up, structuring of the saints. That's why he gave the gifts. That they, the saints, will now do the work of the ministry. To the end that we all come into the unity of faith. And of the knowledge, epignosis, accurate knowledge. Of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the fullness of the stature of the fullness of Christ, and even that growth is to an end. Verse 14, read together that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Now, listen, he said, by the slight of men. And the crowning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deception. Deception. There is a lot of deception going on in the body of Christ. And a lot of people don't want to speak. Why? Because they don't want to, they hate the injury. Let me tell you something. If you do not want to stand the pain of ministry, go and get a job. Just go somewhere. We have a lot of men of God who are afraid of their ego, their reputation, and they will not alert the body when there is danger. The Bible says, not many of you should presume to be teachers because you will be judged. Hallelujah. There is a lot of deception in the body of Christ. A lot of gospels. Colossians 2 verse 8. Can we look at that quickly? Thank you Jesus. The presence of God is strong in this place. Colossians 2 verse 8. The agenda of the devil. Are you there? One to read. It's projected. Beware. Lest any man spoil you stop the word spoil there is let any man make you a spoil you know when when let any man plunder you cheat you let any man spoil you through what what is hold on what is philosophy what is philosophy nice well crafted entertaining intelligent intellectual presentation of scripture the bible calls it philosophy and what vain deceit is that in your bible it says after what 
the tradition of men and after fraternity with this world based on the principles and concepts that have evolved from men who brought it about without the presence of God after the redument this is what is happening in many churches after the redument of this world but not after Christ we have emulated a lot of junks and things that have no spiritual bearing we have read all kinds of unbelievers have written entrepreneurial books on how to run a church like a business empire and we have people who are gullible they went for retreats but not to pray they went to sit down and listen to doctrines of devils and they have learned all kinds of demonic ways of manipulation and seductions and they are deceiving the body of Christ after the redument of the world are you, are you hearing me tonight? With my mouth shall I make it known from the rising of the sun right until it's going down. I will preach of the mercies of the Lord. Some of us are already being deceived right now. There are all kinds of metaphysical deceit. Please hear me. Some of us in our innocence, we have mentored men that are misleading us in the name of deceit. Praise the Lord. There are many churches right now that do all kinds of satanic and demonic things. The man of God has special members they take to the river. They do all kinds of demonic, satanic things. Because they read the Bible does not mean it's of God. There are men of God that add the word of God with all kinds of satanic books. Twelve books of Moses. Eleven books of Moses. All kinds of metaphysical, philosophical, sociological junks. We put it together. The fact that you are compromising and seeing results does not mean it's God. There are natural principles. And men by nature are gullible. That a crowd is coming like this does not necessarily verify that we are of God. Hallelujah. Many of us like results. Anything that looks like results we just go hook, line, and sink. But may the Lord grant us eyes to see. May we see the handwritings on the wall. And see that for many people, it is written, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ufesem. God is saying, we have been weighing you for a long time. You have been misleading people. God has been weighing you. But Ichabod, the glory will depart from many churches. And Ezekiel was caught up in the spirit. And when Ezekiel went by the spirit to the temple, he saw the atrocities that were happening in the temple. Yet the men of God were still dressing nice, wearing suits, wearing kaftan like me, having flowers around, but they are not of God. Deceiving people and being deceived themselves. Lord, grant us ears to hear and eyes to see. There are an evolution of erroneous doctrines. Please listen to me. Some of these doctrines have been so long in the body of Christ. They are popular. We like them. You hear them on TV. People can attest to have received results from them. But I tell you the truth, they are not of God. When Moses threw his rod, Pharaoh also threw his rod. And they all became serpents. Hallelujah. The Bible says, come out of her. Come out. It was a cry to the Zion of God. Come out of her. Be not partakers of her halotry. So that you will not participate in her, in her place.
And the deception is twofold. Number one, erroneous doctrines. Popular but erroneous doctrines. Well received but erroneous doctrines. Result producing but erroneous doctrines. Number two, listen, look up please. The second, so the first dimension of the deception is a reception of doctrines that may be popular. Listen, don't get me wrong. Some of the people who advocate these doctrines are innocent people. Genuinely called of God. Hallelujah. The second is deception to come, listen. I think this second one is even more, is worse than the first dimension of deception. Where people refuse to open up themselves to the greater light and the truth of God's word because of their ego and what it will cost them. Are you listening to me? There are men who would rather die than to begin to explore the new things they are hearing to find out whether they are wrong. There are churches and denominations that will never change. It doesn't matter even if, it's, if Jesus appears to them. They have built a reputation around their doctrines too much. It, it, they will have to die. Many people will not adjust. Rather, they will criticize any truth that is beyond their comprehension. I, I said it during the teachings, the full, the full gospel. There are people who have mistakenly been convinced that they are the alpha and omega of all the keys of revelation of the kingdom and that the sphere of all that they know is all that there is in God. This is another kind of deception. The best any man can be is an effective member of the body. So we have men who are arrogant. I once had a man of God make a very arrogant statement that even if for any reason he has cause to read another man's book, even if he reads it, he will see a lot of things through that book that even the author did not see. I said, look at it. See that? That's what stopped the scribes from receiving the message of Jesus. Because they had known all the books, the Pentateuch. They were the doctors and philosophers of that time. They had every knowledge that they needed. So when Jesus came with a simple message, thy kingdom come, by your will being done, they rejected it because it did not appeal to them. And when they found out that the whole town was running in sincere hunger, just like many people do today, they began to criticize and made it a point of duty that Jesus would die. But his death only escalated the message. And today, millions and billions of people are receiving this truth. It takes a childlike heart. One of the biggest deceptions in the church right now is the ego to accept the fact that, look, could it be that this that I've held on to, could it be wrong? Or could it be that it may not be wrong, but there is a higher light? Are you listening to me? There are truths that are not wrong. The Bible says he made many lights. Those lights gave illumination in their capacity. But then God made two great lights. Let me give you an advice. You must posture yourself consistently. Listen to me. You must posture yourself. Open up yourself and be in a position of perpetual realignment. Because revelation is progressive. That is a sign that you are making progress in the spirit. As you begin to explore the deep things of God, you will begin to see clearer. The Bible says Jesus touched his eyes and he saw men but he saw them like trees. If Jesus had left him, he would argue that men are like trees. But then he touched his eyes again. 
And the Bible says he began to see clearly. Open our eyes, O oh God, that we may behold wondrous things out of thy law. There has been an inaccurate interpretation of the truth of God's word. Inaccurate. And let me tell you something. When it comes to the accurate interpretation of God's word, it's not about Bible college and theological study. It's about the spirit of prophecy. Because the Bible says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Deception. Some of our family members today have been taught that when they leave a particular man of God, their destiny goes with him. Have you, have you had that kind of gospel? Where the man of God ties himself and says, you are tied to the oil on my life. If you leave, you will fail. It's called the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. It came from the pit of hell. Popular, result producing, but erroneous. This does not come from God. The reason why many men of God like it is because it's lucrative. It has a lot of financial benefits. If I can have 10 wealthy people tied to my oil. Men have just found ways to camp and to ease away their insecurities and frustrations. So they create gospels that try to make them feel secured by threatening people around. It came from the devil. Some of you are already doing it. Stop it tonight. You are being in deception. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. God never gave man authority to usurp authority over another person. The concept of fatherhood and mentorship is not idolatry. It's to guide and instruct in righteousness. Oh, but there is a change. There is a change. I tell you, there is a change. Things will not be as they have always been. There is the hand of God bringing judgment and bringing redemption. Because there are many people that are in this error innocently. Both men of God and people. We used to believe some of these things years ago. But as we began to explore, every time we believed it, something in our hearts told us, uh uh, go back. And like the Bereans, we went back. And when we began to explore, we found out that there were a lot of question marks. They did a lot of filling the gap. And we said, no way. What is supposed to be in that gap? This is what the Lord has been. There are many of you, when you hear a message, it's not like you are cynical. Something in your spirit tells you, go back. Go back. When other people are shouting, whoa. God says, uh-uh. Fill in that gap before you rejoice. Fill in the gap. It's deception. It's deception. Is happening fast fast there are deceptive church growth principles that are taught in ministers conferences deceptive diabolical occultic church growth principles there are deceptive church fundraising principles popular seemingly result producing but hear this voice tonight I'm speaking to you. John said, I am the voice of one. They said, who are you? Where do you belong? Which camp do you belong? John said, uh -uh, this is not an issue of camp. I am just a voice. One of the first assignment of the spirit of prophecy is to destroy the altars of Baal that a new one be built. Deception. The strength of the kingdom of darkness is ignorance. For as long as the body of Christ remains in ignorance, ignorance, the inaccurate understanding of scriptures. Revelation is not an opinion of man, it's an unfailing 
of that which has been hidden. And that happens by the Spirit of God. Deception. Hallelujah. Number two, agenda of the devil for the church in this season is going to shock you what I'm about to say. Distractions through religious activities. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Distractive religious activities. Hmm. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all dominion. You have taken all the praise. You have made them yours. The highest praise to the King. He will take all the glory. He will take all the praise. He will take all dominion. He will take all the praise. He will make it yours. Paul seeing and speaking to the Hebrew church. He said we, all things have been made under the feet of Jesus. He said but we do not yet see. Although from heaven's perspective it has been so. There is still a contention in the earth realm. That's why God will use voices to make that a reality. That Christ will submit to the authority of the father the church will submit to the authority of christ and by the agents of the spirit the spirit and the bride will compel cosmos to come under the authority of the church this is the agenda of god for the nations so there is a plot listen to me listen to me this is a a shoot out from the spirit of deception distractions there is no time in the church age where believers have activities everybody say after me activities there are there are there are churches that are organizing programs every day every day every day that's what they read from their books engage the members and they won't leave your church so they read it it was written by a business expert and a consultant It looks popular, but let me tell you the truth. You can criticize me, I'm used to it, but I will tell you. These things look popular. Let me tell you where this spirit came from. Hold on. Do you realize that when the nation of Israel were in captivity in Egypt, hallelujah, when Moses came as a deliverer, what happened? The moment he went to Pharaoh and said, God is already making preparation to get the people out. Pharaoh said, ah, let's use a strategy. He said, give them more work. It is because they are idle that they even have the gods to begin to consider an exodus. Occupy them. And when they had the work, it was too much. They told Moses, they said, forget about this issue of exodus now. Because now they are making us look for straw. Every time Satan sees a people waiting. Do you know how many times the Bible talks about the benefit of waiting? I bring you the counsel of the spirit. There is too much distraction. Activities everywhere. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not saying everybody who is involved in this is false. You get my point? I'm just trying to plot out to you. We think the impact is in the motions. But the Bible says it is they that wait upon the Lord. They shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings. There are many men of God right now who are under pressure pressure to do any and everything just finding activities because they believe that once there is motion who taught us facebook twitter the more you create activities the more people come to your side it is that business strategy we brought to the church because we think the church is facebook so we think when we keep engaging the people 
it will show that we are increasing. The average believer has no knowledge of the truth of God's word that he can use to stand alone. That's why we depend on pastors. People, I'm not saying spiritual authorities and ministers. No, we are not. We have a place in the body of Christ. But where you become so dependent, as though if you leave the person, you will die, you are already on the road to deception. And men of God pride themselves. How many sons and daughters, you know, when people come to me and talk about submission, I feel like running away because I cannot understand what they are saying. Aaron, my son, ah, me. When you visit the secret place, you will be ashamed of taking some titles. It will take God to force you and say, just for organization. Yet, this is the pride of people. They fight it. Some men have the effrontery to say, this is my earthly father, but he's my spiritual son. Shame on both the man and his revelation. It's a sign of immaturity. We think it is great pride because they clap for you after the statement. Talk is cheap. Distraction. Religious activities where Christ is not the focus. Can I tell you the truth? Look at me. I'm going to tell you a truth you may not hear in many places. Over 70% of the weekly religious activities that are happening in many of the Christian circles are only aimed at increasing the ministry and getting the job going. Christ is less, if at all, a focus in most of these programs. Forget about what we men of God do on stage. We can kneel down and cry and ushers will bring this and will clean muk. Imagine holding. I'm just trying to show you all the benefits. If you gather 100,000 people non stop for 100 days, do you know how much you will raise? Is it lucrative or not? Not to talk of those who will sow into your life by being blessed. Now, I'm not saying every gathering is wrong. But I'm telling you, many of these gatherings are just a, a... They don't teach you. I'm telling you this. They don't share it in congregations. Go, you don't have the opportunity to go for a minister's conference. They will look at you and say, are you a minister? Go out. I am telling you. And people discuss it boldly. But let there be a generation that will not adulterate itself with corruption and error. Many of you will be the only voices some communities will have to hear. The Bible says there is as it were many voices and none of them is without effect. Will you allow your voice to be corrupted? There is a way of getting all of these things. Look at me. While I was preparing to come, I was taking my bath and the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. And... I was angry in my spirit about the ways people raise money in church. And then the Lord told me something. He said, listen, listen. I don't know of any church in the world. I don't know of any auditorium in the world that can sit two million people comfortably. I don't know of any. The largest gathering in the world that has happened is six million people within a span of three days. Only three days. They could not manage them. But Moses worked with more than three million people for a long time. How did he cater for their need? What system was used? There is no auditorium I know on earth, church auditorium, that is as expensive as the temple of Solomon. How did they do it? Were the people so wealthy like that? Or was there a spiritual principle we are missing out? They had enough. I don't know one church that has stopped members and said this is enough. Except it's just emotional frivolities by the pastor. You say, oh, it's enough. Don't bring more money. But David meant it. He, was, he had enough to start building the temple. What are we missing, church of the Lord Jesus Christ?
distraction. There are many of you, it is when you started getting unnecessarily distracted that your spiritual life started dying. Are you following me now? You started with God. You started celebrating ministrations every day. This is how busy my itinerary is. In the morning I'm here. I don't have time for you. I have one in the evening. Then tomorrow, and you started calling it ministry expansion. Because at the end of it, there is an envelope. You calculate everything. That's somebody's salary. Your money in a week is somebody's salary. And he said, Lord, thank you. You spoke to me that the oil of my life will speak. Be careful because you will not know when you will fall. The Bible says, let he that thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. This is what has killed men of God. Many men of God started on fire, but they became administration, administrators. I try as much as possible. And we try in this ministry to do less of administration. God gave us wisdom to create robust administrative structures so that we can focus on the ministry of the word and prayer. Because let me tell you, some of you are already receiving all kinds of invitations. You think that a door is opening means it's God that opened it. Be careful. I pray on every ministration before I honor it. I don't care who is bringing it. You ask the protocol department and they will tell you. Because I do not want to be found doing what God has not sent me to do. When he sends you, he will defend you. When you send yourself, you will defend yourself. Hallelujah. These are unpopular parts. But choose whether to be a celebrity in the eyes of men or to be a voice that men can listen whenever they want to hear the counsel of God. I choose the latter. That I will be a voice. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Look at me. Many of you may need to make resolutions this night. Look at me please. Listen. I want you as you go back this night. Go and edit the things you do with your 24 hours. And see how much Satan has choked you with activities that have no eternal relevance. I am telling you the truth. Is that true? Just take out time and in all sincerity through the lens of truth and of the word of God. Edit your 24 hours and see how many things you do within your 24 hours that actually leads you towards purpose and has an eternal relevance. You will understand that this is a... This is a strategy from Satan to distract us. I've taken out time to edit my life. Especially in this phase of our lives. Look at me. There are some things that are not necessarily evil, but they are weights at this level of life. Are you hearing me? The Bible says, Hebrews 12 verse 1, it says, Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. They are not necessarily sins, but they are weights. Lamentations 3.27, it says, It is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. Some of you may never be great in life because you are not ready to take the burden now. The strength, the glory of young people is in their strength. Pay the price. Now you have the energy to fast. Some of our parents cannot endure that again. But now you have strength. So take advantage of the strength you have right now. Your mind is still alive and active. Explore. Pay the price. I won't deceive you. You will cry. It will cost you something. But when weeping is done, you will rejoice forever. Let's hurry up. The third plot, Satan, is fraternity with Babylon. Friendship. Friendship with Babylon. The Bible says, love not the world. The word love there is do not develop a lust, a craving. Love not the world or the things that are in this world. The word world there is the word system. Are you listening to me? Some people have religiously said, uh-huh, why are you driving a nice car? 
Why are you doing this? Why are we buying this? We are wasting money. Please, this is not what the Bible is talking about. This is another religion. It is in category one. You know, the deception thing. No. God is not against your looking good. Lazarus with all his poverty is in heaven. Abraham with his wealth is in heaven. It's not because they were rich or poor that they missed heaven or didn't get there. You can have a productive life on earth and have eternal relevance. I choose that option. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? But it says, love not the world or the things that are in this world. It says, whoever loves the world, period, without argument, the love of the Father is not in him. Loss of the eyes, loss of the flesh, pride of life. Some of us have a craving for vanities. When God wants you to sit down and study, you say, ah, there's one car exhibition they are doing somewhere. It's not wrong, but compared to the priority you have, this is vanity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people who can be in church like this and the word of God is coming with this kind of fire that the word of God is coming. Check what they are doing. They are trying to respond to their friend. As if the friend is dying. It can't wait. Were you dead before Facebook or, or all of the, the social media? See, some of you cannot even off your phone to pray. It will be as if pain is choking you. Five minutes, just, well, you just run and say, let me check. If nobody has checked, you will send something. You are waiting for who will respond. This is, this is fraternity with Babylon. That's where some of you learned ungodly attitudes. They wrote poems and jokes that are satanic and anti-progress, anti-greatness. You saw it, read it, absorbed it, and you are using it. See how your life started nosediving. Many people got into satanic relationships. Men of God, online. Now, I know that these things have been used very well. There, is, there are demonic sites that men of God have gone to. Demonic sites. All searching for solutions. Huh? Zodiac. Huh? Zodiac sites. You know them. You are pretending as if you don't know them. All of these sites. Click and see who your life partner is. Or click and see how long you have to live. They say you are dying next week. I'm coming for Koinonia. <laughs> Who asked you to go and click it? You put your date of birth, everything, the name of your intending spouse, it brought out your life. He said you have suffering and death afterwards. <sighs> you just say, I want to see you. Some things have been going on in my life. What is it? You carried your hands and you went and tied yourself. fraternity. Longer throat has taken some people. They've gone to places where they shouldn't go. Said yes to things and people they should not say yes to. He who does not have control over his spirit is like a city without walls. I refuse. I refuse to fraternize with Babylon. Babylon not her methods, not her way of life, because the Bible says, Babylon the great is falling. He said, her and all the kings of the earth that have benefited in her merchandise. He said, this great harlot, Babylon, in one hour, her glory has been turned to shame. It will be sudden. And the Bible tells us, come out of her. Come out of her. God is speaking to somebody tonight, come out of her. Go and re-edit your life. Re-edit your life. There are some of you ladies here. You can have 10 to 20 boyfriends. From the film you watch, they said that's how to be a correct girl. Rich, poor, average, in case anyone that works. You hear a message like this now and think we're just sweating and talking nonsense. 
and you will be hardened. And if they ask, they say, what kind of man do you want to marry? He said, I want him to be serious with God. He must be a disciplined man. Is it a fair combination? Look at the way your life is. Everybody say after me, I will stand out. I hope as you are laughing, the Lord is speaking to you. Hallelujah. Deception. Distraction. Fraternity with Babylon. Let me tell you the agenda of God now. We cannot just talk about the things that the devil is doing. What is God doing? The Bible says the sons of Issachar, they had an understanding of the times and they knew what to do. The spirit and the bride say come. Let me tell you what is happening in the body of Christ right now. Look at me. The Bible says before the day of the Lord, please listen. It tells us that something is going to happen. What will happen? He said, Elijah shall come again before the day of the Lord. Why will Elijah come? What does Elijah represent? The transfiguration of Jesus Christ. When Jesus was transfigured, two people stood by his left and right. Is that correct? One was Elijah. The other was Moses representing the law and the prophet. Notice that all the people that represent major spiritual truths that should not be aborted, though they died, but their body did not touch this earth. Because their, their representation is an adumbration. Are you listening to me? If Moses' body dies and is buried in the earth, and this is, I'm going to say something that will create a lot of controversy right now. Moses represents the law. This is a very shocking thing. It's against what has been preached. But did you notice that against our popular messages, Moses, his body is not in the earth. Elijah represents the prophet. The prophetic has not finished. So Elijah did not touch the earth. I won't say more than that. Sila, let he that has an ear hear what the Spirit say to the churches. Popular, but wrong. Let's continue. The Bible says Elijah will come, Malachi. It says, before the great day of the Lord. Listen. Every time Jesus is about to appear, whether Jesus as a person or his prophetic agenda, Elijah always foreruns him. Are you following me now? Before Elijah came in the New Testament, before Jesus came, what happened? John the Baptist came where? In the spirit of Elijah. The spirit of prophecy. And the Bible says before Jesus will come again, there will be a manifestation of Elijah. So, don't be surprised if you see a manifestation of prophets. But let me tell you where the problem is wrong. Elijah is not manifesting as a miracle worker. Elijah is manifesting to bring accurate knowledge of the understanding of the truth. To prepare the church for the coming of Christ. Are you getting that? If you understand this, you can test prophecy at once. Because see... The clearest proof that a man is a prophet is not miracles and all of this. The clearest proof is that you can bring to us an accurate understanding of scripture. This is what tells us that you are in connection with the throne room. He said by their fruits. Their fruit is not character. Character can be deceptive. Their fruit is their message. Right now, many people believe if your pastor is a prophet, I apologize. I'm not, I'm not against. I have people that are prophets. I know they are of God. We, we, we have times dedicated. We live in the miraculous here. 
But I'm telling you, listen to me. The primary function of prophets in this day is not to check how much you have in your account and say, promise, stand up. 331 302 879 110. That's my account number. <laughs> you see that? And you say, Jesus. Now, that's the manifestation of the gift. But if that is all we think prophecy is about, that's not the true portrait of the spirit of Elijah. The spirit of Elijah first comes, the first assignment is to correct errors by the accurate understanding. This is what we call epignosis. Epignosis is not just a Greek terminology to write books and sell. Uh -uh. Epignosis means the accurate understanding of truth. And this one is by revelation. There is no school that will teach it. The spirit of God will overshadow a man and bet something. Mary said, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. He said, the power of the highest will overshadow you. There are men who God is overshadowing right now. God is mantling, closing them like a coven and birthing dangerous dimensions of spiritual truth. That's the spirit of Elijah. When I talk of the spirit of prophecy, I'm not necessarily talking of the office of a prophet alone. Correcting a lot of things. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? Will he find men who will be able to align and adjust to the corrections of the truth? Are you receiving something? when listen to me listen to me before the rebuilding of Zion there will first be a breaking down a tearing down are you listening to me then there will be a reconstruction of the house of God not by the patterns of men hallelujah are you listening to me the sacrifice of Cain and Abel is a type of the old and the new church it's a prophetic adumbration what happened because Cain is the elder brother he believed that he understood the rudiments of giving that kind of sacrifice and the Bible says he wanted to sacrifice and do something for God but his combinations were wrong where they received and then his brother Abel, which is a type of the new church, came and put that sacrifice according to pattern. So God is revealing divine patterns on how to do spiritual things such that they become acceptable sacrifices. And this will cause the way we run ministry as we know to change for many ministries. Happy are ministries that can align and take the pain and, and forget about the ego and allow it to happen. But for those who will not change, mene, mene, tekel, ufasen. You have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. Hallelujah. So the first thing that God is doing right now is correcting errors. Let me tell you, don't confuse this. This is what is happening in the body of Christ. God is raising prophetic and apostolic voices who are coming after the order of Elijah with the spirit of prophecy, which is the testimony of Jesus Christ. Their focus and everything they do by votes and leads people directly to the Christ of God. And they will come with grace. They will deliver mysteries that are uncommon. The fact that these mysteries are uncommon does not mean it is not of God. It will be resisted, but that which is born of God always overcomes. So eventually, light will surpass darkness. It will be strange. When Jesus came, bringing the gospel of the kingdom... The Bible says, the people say, from whence cometh this man? He speaks as one with authority and not as the scribes. The Bible says, when they saw the miracles and the things he did, they said, we have never seen it in this fashion. That means there is a fashion that is coming. 
And that's why God is preparing you. That you are hearing this message tonight, I want you to know that you are part of the agenda of God. Are you listening to me? That you are hearing this message, whether inside or outside. That you are hearing this message. And for as many around this country and the world who will hear this message and those who are streaming online, I'm telling you that there is an agenda. And for you to be hearing this message, you are part of it. Just as God is using me, there are many prophetic voices scattered around the world. Not many, as it were. But many in that they are within reach. That God is raising. The message is the same. The expressions must be different. Because we are different. But the passion and the communications of the spirit is the same. Preparing the bride. It is the spirit and the bride that will ask this word to come. Can you just pray in tongues as you're seated in one minute? Yes, Lord, we hear your voice. We hearken unto the voice of the Spirit. And we understand the handwritings that you are writing on the wall. You must open your heart. Some of the things I've shared have challenged some of you. Search the scriptures and you will find that the word of God is consistent. Come on, just, just express your spirit in, in one or two minutes. The remnant of the house of Jacob, the uncompromising generation, kept under the custody of Obadiah, 7,000 who have refused to bow to Baal. Yeah, yeah. Ventilate your spirit. Just let it find expression. One minute I will continue. Outside, make sure you are stretching. We hear the sounds of the spirit. To the hill of the Lord, we press higher in the spirit. It may 
may cost us now but we will pay the price we will soar to the spirit we will labor in knowledge uncompromising yeah. Yeah. So let it rain, let it rain, open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, yeah. let it rain, would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it rain, let it rain, open the floodgates of heaven, yeah. yeah, would you open the portals of glory, yeah. Fountains of your presence. Yeah. Yeah. Open the fountains of knowledge. For that great and terrible day the spirit of Elijah will be poured upon the body of Christ and now is that time in the prophetic blueprint of the spirit where those who are interested Elijah worshippers Elijah preachers Elijah businessmen Elijah workers, Elijah politicians, men crafted, forged out of the furnace of affliction with scars that represent their dealings in the spirit. Men who have endured pain, men who have endured tears, men who have died to themselves and their agendas. Elijah's in the military, Elijah's in business. It's the spirit of prophecy that will testify only of Christ and of his agenda. Listen. When the spirit of Elijah comes, the spirit of Elijah will tear down walls. The spirit of Elijah will first be destructive and then constructive. It will break down patterns that have been built after Babel. For there is a rebuilding of the tower of Babel. But the spirit of Elijah is an audacious spirit is a prophetic and apostolic spirit of prophecy that comes to correct the errors of the fathers to correct the errors and they shall be called the repairers of the breach they shall rebuild the walls and raise the desolations of all generations they shall be called the repairers of the breach the repairers of the breach they will fix that which was spoiled. They will fix that which has been popular. 
yet not in synchrony not in tandem with the workings of the spirit they will have ears that are sharp they will have eyes with the visions of an eagle and they will be able to decipher the writings on the world they will hearken to the voice of his majesty and will only build the house according to divine pattern they will introduce a fire that will burn everything and test everything it will be a refiner's fire they will come after the order of elijah that the word of god from their mouth will be like fire it will burn it will reshape it will construct they will be men of power men of force men of grace men of dexterity audacity they will have power in the heavens it is during that time that the sun will be turned into blood and there will be signs in the earth there will be wonders because the manifestation of this man i bring to you body of christ blow the trumpet i come with an apostolic mantle sound the alarm sound the alarm the seasons are changing there is a renaissance a rebirth of the elijah church correcting the errors of the fathers men of authentic power men of grace men of revelation and insight that have not been taught by any man comparing spiritual things with spiritual that is only taught by the agency of the holy ghost those who have searched and understood where the secret place of the most high is they have found it they've come there and they will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Take us to that place. Let there be a burden of the Elijah Church. Let there be a burden of the Elijah Church in Abuja, in Lagos, in Zaria, in Portacot, all over Nigeria. Let there be a burden. We blow the shofar. We authorize heaven. Elijah's arise Elijah's arise Elijah businessmen arise Elijah preachers arise Elijah worshippers arise with the spirit of prophecy which will only testify of no denomination of no sect but the Christ of God Kingdoms will rise against kingdoms. Doctrines will rise against doctrines. Nations will rise against nations. There will be a clash of light and darkness. And the church of the Lord, built upon the rock, shall stand. Tried by fire. Men who have been battered from the furnace of pain and affliction. With no agenda of their own whatsoever. This is a message from the Lord to the body of Christ. The spirit of Elijah cometh. The spirit of prophecy. There will be a restoration of the accurate 
interpretation of the truth of the word accurate accurate given by the Holy Ghost the one who inspired it accurate interpretation of scriptures Hallelujah. Hear me. Hear me. The Lord told me that what will begin to happen is an exposition of darkness. You will hear things on media that will shock you. Darkness will be exposed. The veils that have covered the eyes of men for years will be exposed. Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ufasen. I sound it and I prophesied as I was commanded. Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ufasen. The altars of Baal. Judgment is coming upon the body of Christ. And there will be a smashing down. For many have been weighed in a balance. And they have been found wanting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After the destruction of the altars of Baal, the next will be a fresh walk upon the saints, preparing them for the last apostolic revival that will be coming upon the earth that will be the next mission of the spirit of Elijah first to tear down walls to correct error and then to begin to rebuild the saints there will be a restoration of the true apostolic the true prophetic the true evangelistic the true pastoral and teacher offices then once again, men will begin to call upon the name of the God that will not be strange unto them. Men will begin to call upon the God that they know and have a working relationship with. And I tell you friends, when that begins to happen, it will announce the greatest revival Smith Wigglesworth prophesied it the generals of old prophesied it I announce to you there is coming a revival everything that will be shaken will be shaken the newspapers will no longer carry stories of politicians the captions will be the fire of the spirit our media we will not need to pay to go on air. The impact will be so great. It will make news. The fire will fall in nations you did not expect. And then after that, the heavens will be open. And once again, we will see him, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. The Alpha and the Omega. He will come gloriously upon the silvery cloud and his feet will not touch the earth. And the victorious church, now without spot or wrinkle, will be caught up and we will meet with him and it will begin another dispensation. And then the spirit and the pride will say, Come Lord, come Lord. Yes to your agenda. Yes to your agenda. Yes to your agenda. We make way for the coming of the Lord Jesus. We make way for the revival. Jesus is coming. Preachers, don't preach it again. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming with the blast of the archangel. He will come for a victorious church. He's coming is soon. 
That's why the spirit of Elijah is released upon the body. Jesus is coming. This same Jesus whom you have seen go to heaven will return in the exact same manner. I bring you a message. Jesus Christ is returning to planet earth. Jesus Christ is returning. It will happen. It's not a myth. It's not a legend. A day will come. There will be no more business. There will be no more APU. An agenda bigger than it will unfold. We are at the ending periods. Let him that has an ear hear and give priority to the agenda of the spirit. Every other thing will become temporal. But only one agenda will stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This is what God is doing right now. Right now. If you've ever tried to find out where the church is in prophecy, this is what God is doing right now. Any church, any man of God, you find with the spirit of Elijah tearing down the walls of Baal and building people is a true church. This is how you will know them that are of God and them that are not of God. And all the sorcerers and magicians and the soothsayers and the necromancers that appear they will fall together with Babylon I give you glory Lord hallelujah please let me pray for the family that came from Kogi please come tonight's message is a message to the body of Christ you're welcome sir you're welcome, sir. You're welcome, ma. You're welcome, my dear. Welcome. Can you appreciate them? <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to announce to you that you are come to Mount Zion. The Spirit of God is in this place. There's no jamboree or magic. Christ is Lord here. The Lord will bring deliverance to your family. The oppression of 36 years will end. Can I pray for you? I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me something about you, sir. It's a miracle that you are not yet dead. Based on the things that I'm seeing. Because death tried you two times. This is what God is telling me. Yes. Is that true? They will go to inside church. to collapse and The Lord is telling me to tell you that death tried him two times. It's the grace of God that has kept him. You see, and and you too, nothing. Huh? I'm seeing a bag with holes inside. Everything you get leaves. Not I don't I don't fit again. It's all right. It's all right. Please, please don't cry. Please help her with the handkerchief, please, somebody. This is a mother, for God's sake. Please. Please. You can see how wicked Satan is. And rather than we men of God contending to bring solutions for people, we are looking for names for ourselves. All of you will experience the hand of God. Let me tell you, things will change. You will know you met God tonight. We are his ambassadors. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Who is, are you sisters?
That's what I'm saying. Don't, don't worry. Don't tell me. Let me talk. Hmm? Because I need to. There is, there is, there, this one is a curse. Huh? Sister, there is a curse. Any man that comes around you will just play around with your heart and pack his load and go. This is what has been happening. A very beautiful girl. Huh? But the Lord will set you free. Okay? And you, I'm going to pray for you. Because the face I'm seeing physically is not what I'm seeing in the spirit. Sir, God showed me, but I didn't talk to you. You are tied with snakes. This is what I'm seeing from your feet to your head. This is what makes him to collapse. It's as if you cannot move your legs. Yes, yes. Is that true? It, I'm seeing, but God will set you free. Yes. Madam, please don't cry. Please, for God's sake. It's okay. Hope comes to your family. This is not everybody. Bring their pictures. You brought some pictures. Go and bring it. Did you discuss this with me? Did you discuss this with me? Did you tell me you are coming with pictures? The Lord who sees these things will solve your problems. Who is this? Where is he? It's not you. The devil put the spirit of hatred between you and him. Even the little resources to send and help you is not doing it. It's not a bad person. This is demonic. Before, where, where? If you don't see me, where is that one money? But in now, three months, you don't send anything. No tell me anything. So let hope, let it rise. For darkness trembles in your holy land. Sing it one more time for this family. Listen, when I pray for you, things will change overnight. Did you hear what I said? Things will change overnight. Sir, this oppression will leave you right now. I set you free right now. Sheba Katalabos. The heat you're feeling is the power of God. Thou devil of death, leave him. I curse you right now. Take your hands off him. I restore to you everything you have lost. Hell. Hell. Sir. Command financial restoration, restoration of everything you have lost in the name of Jesus. It's written in God's word, blotting out every handwriting. I enforce that which has been finished from redemption, and I declare that you will walk in victory in the name of Jesus. I need to pray for you. devil of darkness leave this woman right now you are leaving I curse it you are the spirit of delay you are the spirit of death see something is coming out from you out out of this woman right now I 
reconcile you with all your loved ones. May they begin to call you and bless you. Let your business flourish. I hold your hands and I give you the keys of blessings as an ambassador of the Most High. Let your times of tears end forever. You will live long. Any curse on you be set free right now. There's a curse on you. Let the curse be taken. Let the curse go by the blood of Jesus. See, there is a demon. Leave her, leave her. See, this is it. Out! 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 Come out of her right now. Come out of her. This is the spirit responsible for this predicament. Out! Come out of her right now. Don't... Your mother is not a witch. Are you hearing me? Please, please don't let people... This is, this is just deliverance God is doing for her. Come out! You are a foul spirit. Out of this woman right now. Out! Out! This curse of darkness. Come out of her. Stand up, madam. You are free. Stand up. God bless you. Don't cry. Please, don't cry. Please. Where's that handkerchief? Help her. Look, madam, wait. Let me explain. Don't be embarrassed. Please. Don't be embarrassed. Alright? Please. Don't let anybody go on. You are not a witch. Please. Do you understand? What happens is that demons can influence people. These are curses and wickedness of the devil. So this manifestation is just the spirit living. You are free now. What you need is to build yourself with the word of God. My dear, let me pray for you. Because the Lord, you were the one that God used as a savior. Huh? Look at me. Just look at me. Let this girl go around. Let her go free right now. I curse you. Out! Come out! Out of her right now. I set you free. I set you free. I open up every door that has been closed. Return no more in Jesus' name. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. One more time. Job, Job was a man who there is no human being who will go through what Job went through and not be afraid. In one day, everything, your estate disappears. In one day, seven of your children disappear. In one day, your fortune, everything. And Job sat down as if that were not enough. Boils began to grow. Dogs would come and lick Job. Job was an object of pity. And while he sat down there, the wife looked at him one day and said, Job, is there hope for you? I'm your wife. I said I do, but now I'm Job. I still do, but you, there's, there's nothing you are, it's, it's over. And Job looked and said, though he slay me, though he slay me, Shapara Kotaya, I searched for an explanation, but since I did not find, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I imagine when Job had double, I wonder what his mocker said. Because I believe they were still alive. Hmm. Let me
me tell you something I tell you before December ends some of you some people will see you and bend their head because the, the stories they have said listen the things that they have said around you listen hold on and they were right except God intervenes what they have said is so predictable ah but the God who can turn around turn things listen in my little life i don't boast to know god too well but i've seen the bible say oh taste and see brothers and sisters in my little life i have seen this god who can arise right god god my brother when god arises for even you the recipient will sit down and say what is this the bible says when the lord again turn our captivity I have seen families that this year january they were beggars but today give them one million who have insulted them january this year i've seen it i'm not talking of job this is what god can do i've seen people who based on their medical report they should not even reach june they may not share it with others by the privilege of the ministry God has given me I get to talk to people they don't hide anything from me there are times I've seen medical reports that have challenged me myself and I said my God and they come with confidence and say sir I know listen if you don't conquer fear as a man of God you won't go far because I told you God talks to men like he's talking to himself he will never tell you what you can do he will tell you what he can do is God speaking to someone tonight fear is a spirit yes I know there are nine of you in your family you have watched everybody become a failure as soon as you graduate the devil turns your certificate like tissue paper and then God has been showing you in the dreams like Joseph that you will be the savior and you're saying oh god just let my marriage just work that's all i'm asking and god is saying no don't be like gideon don't be like gideon when he appeared to gideon gideon said no 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 no, don't talk about me i'm the least in my family coming from the least tribe and god says that's why i'm here the spirit of fear has destroyed businesses the spirit of, let me tell you how the spirit of fear works he uses something that is real in your life as the basis for stopping you to rise high are we together so god says come darling god says i'm going to make you a great lady and then satan reminds you where was god when you were failing yesterday you see how fear works and you see, first you say no 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 abba god is faithful but later when you sit down he said truly god where were you all because i remember fasting 21 days it was after the 21 days fasting that i failed god where were you that now that i'm not even fasting you are the interesting thing about god eh? let me tell you after a challenging season in your life when god comes he doesn't discuss it he just continues from where he stopped hi this god God told you you will be in ministry for five years. You have only two members. When God comes, he says, all right, bring the notebook. I spoke to you about three years. Let's continue. I said, God, I want to let you know that two of my members are leaving. You will never hear him answer you. He just says, let's continue. Because you see, in God's world, whether past, present, delay, they mean nonsense to him. A thousand years is one day. So if he says, I am blessing you today, even if it's five years, it still is today. The day his word comes, it will make up for it. Satan uses something obvious. Obvious. Remember the other time you claimed that you, you don't have any sickness. Now you went to the hospital. Were you blind when the doctors were telling Now I'm not against doctors. I love them so much. Were you blind when the doctors told you that you don't have a womb? And you are trying to trust God in the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden they bring out the medical report and you see something that was written there that while you were growing up developing as a lady something happened and altered your womb and there is no possibility for you to even take in and satan says i rest my case let me tell you what a man of faith 
will do. I know God who is mighty, mighty. The raw material for creating his re any reality is his word. It says through faith we understand. We understand that the walls were framed. The physical structure was framed by the word of God. Listen, don't think I don't know what I'm saying, brothers and sisters. We must conquer the spirit of fear. If this is all that happens to you tonight, even if we round up now, it has been a successful service. You will go back and wonder. I want you to, to just sit down, please sit down and think in one minute what fear has done in your life. There are many of us, God told you, this is your destiny helper, go and meet him. You were almost there. Have you seen people like that? They knocked the office. As soon as the man opened, God said, speak. How many brothers that would have entered a very godly relationship but fear stopped them? You are almost there. And the lady comes and you just pass say, no, I was picking something on the ground. And you go back and say, ah, oh God. After fasting and praying, fear. How many businesses should have started and risen but fear keeps them down? So many people who would have risen but fear satan manifests fear through different things including men of god including our loved ones they say look uh, my dear i know you are a lady thank god for your ambition i know that that young man has been indoctrinating you people but let me tell you this is how life works eh? go on, better go and greet that man when you greet him you know a and b and c and d and then they confuse you and look how many graduates finish from powerful places like Zaria and other places one year after they get out of this place when you see them all the dreams some of you are ashamed to open the notebooks that you had four five years ago because you don't believe anything you wrote here again gone are the days where you would write anything some of you now your prayer request you have 10 prayer requests but the one on your card is only two because say God let me not disgrace myself again if you do this two for me I'm grateful Please pick up your card and write more. Lord, my hair is falling. It must stop. Ah, is that God's business? God is too busy. Who told you? Write it. Are we together? The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. Life can intimidate us in such a way. You, you need to see how people laugh at spiritual people. When you step out of the church cycle, you know, last week I was, I was, I was somewhere and then um, I was having a discussion with, with a, a gentleman and the sarcasm that he had for spiritual things. It was like all these church people and he would mimic pastors and laugh and I felt irritated. I was just waiting to finish with him. He's somebody that I came to just to honor and I said, let me get out of this place. This guy has a, a this, all these politicians, very lousy sarcasm for, you're a politician here, I love you. But I mean very funny funny attitude towards pastors they make it look like we are joking and some of you that's exactly how you are after you finish jumping here when you step out you now become ashamed of everything you did that's why bloggers write all kinds of things and say men of god turn people to children how can you just be talking like a parrot and a man of god says pray and you are praying and talking like a parrot and we live and fear the fear to sustain your convictions your phone rings in a restaurant. Jesus is Lord and you quickly off it because you don't want to raise any dust here. And they say, you, pastor, is you, Abby? And then they start telling you stories about pastors, stories about all kinds of people. Oh, you are the sister I was saying, you will not marry. Continue all this sister thing you are doing. And when they say it, you just sit down feeling guilty for loving and following God. Shout no way. Go and read your Bible and see the destiny of those who mocked God. From Pharaoh to Nebuchadnezzar to Herod to Jezebel. All of their destinies were a straight line. Predictable. Mark the wicked, the Bible says. Are we together? God has not given us the spirit of fear. Romans chapter 4 from verse 18 to 21. What is the cure for fear? Let's examine the father of faith, Abraham, Romans chapter 4, 
from verse 18 to 21. Please give it to us, media. The Bible is speaking about Abraham. This was a man who was trusting God, had received the promise that his seed, you know, talking about Isaac and then Christ prophetically. It says, who against hope? Now, watch the character of faith. I've shared with you, you can get the teaching, the series we've done on faith, that the starting point of faith is always the presence of a supposed impossibility. That's the starting point of your journey. There's no need to have faith over something that is already your experience. It says, who against hope did what? Believed in hope that he might become the father of nations according to that which was spoken. Go ahead. And being not weak in faith, he considered not. This is, this is how, I want to show you how fear works. It begins to bring logic into your faith process. Put two and two, you two use your head. Apostle is just prophesying and saying, before the end of this year, you will be a millionaire. You have the stupidity to say, amen. You see that? You are considering. Not just considering, you are considering in a doubtful way. To believe that that breast lump will just disappear within a few minutes. To believe that God will turn around your life, bring a helper to your destiny and wipe your tears. He considered not. That's the first thing the spirit of fear does. It makes you to begin to consider. You say, okay, it's not like I don't believe, but come on. Is it not that class I graduated with? Abba, let's be real. You hear that? Let's be real. I read so, so, so. I graduated with that class. Abba. And you ask your roommate or anybody. And say, if, even if it's you, will you employ me? He say, I won't employ you. Let me just tell you the truth. I will say my mind. You see how people say it. And they think it's a very wise statement. Me, I will tell you my own church mind. I won't do this and, and that. And then you carry that certificate and look at it. And say, God, is this how you are planned to disgrace me? And you drop it back and say it's over. And God says, ah, ah, you took me out of this equation and you are just being frustrated like that? Consider not. Brothers and sisters, when God speaks to you, take your eyes away from the reasons why it will not come to pass and keep your eyes there. Let God apologize to you for failing you, but on your own part, remain there. Are we together? He considered not his own body. When he was 100 years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. 20. Number two, he staggered not. Staggered not. This is what the Bible calls, Apostle James calls it a double-minded person. Do you know what a double-minded person is? Inventing options as a result of fear. Inventing options. Lord, this is it. I am trusting you. This is what you are going to do. Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm taking this direction. And all of a sudden, because of fear, all of a sudden you start fabricating plan B, plan C, plan D. Some of these things we do and we think they are proofs of wisdom. No, sir. If God tells you, I will make you a nation, brothers and sisters, even if you are inside a hut, believe him. No plan B. Men of faith are those who burn the bridges behind them. Like Esther, if I perish, I perish. This is how I walk with God. There's no possibility of plan B. If God tells me, son, this is how we are going, I say, Lord, let's go. If there is fire there, I remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I walk through that fire. That's what it takes to be a man of faith. Organizing a miracle service like this is suicidal. You must be a man of faith. You don't know the cases and the problems and the challenges that people have. What then gives you the audacity to call nations together and assure them that they will experience the power of God? It takes faith. Are we together? You start a business, it takes faith. Who gave you a guarantee that they will like your products or your services? And you have the audacity to commit funds, commit structures, commit leadership, and then open up and say, okay, the whole world come and be blessed. He staggered not. Some of you are already staggering. Lord, I trust you, but oh, staggered not. But was strong in faith, 
giving glory to God. Giving glory. Another word is giving praise. Giving praise. Full of praise. 21, the last verse. This was the third thing that he did. And this is the third thing that fear does. Remember, the first thing fear does is that you begin to consider. Brings logic into your spiritual process. Are we together? Number two is that it causes you to stagger. And then number three, it begins to dwindle your persuasion. The Bible says, I'm being fully persuaded. Conviction. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. It was Paul who said, I am persuaded that neither life nor death nor this and that and that. He, I'm being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able. Now, hold on very powerful scripture that what he promised he was also what that means you the, when satan begins to bring fear the first thing that suffers is your revelation of god's ability 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 he uses your senses to attack god's ability listen listen to me um let me use someone come sam now watch this Sam, if I say I'm going to give you, let's say, 100,000 naira, the first thing you do is to look at me in your mind and in whatever parameter, and you believe. If I say I'm going to give you 1 million, you will look. If I say I'm going to give you 10 million, if I say I'm going to give you 100 million, that's how that conviction will start dwindling. Then if I say, Sam, by next week you're going to carry a private jet, the, your mind will just, there will be no, there's no provision in your mind to believe it. You are not even going to receive it. Are we together? You will respectfully laugh. But the truth is that you don't even believe him. Now, you may not know but that you're laughing it looks like an, it's like the kiss of Judas. A kiss is a good thing until somebody uses it as a strategy to chain you. Judas kissed Jesus and said, this is the guy. So, you can laugh. The Bible says, Mary had dwelt good like medicine. But that laugh is not a laugh of faith. That laugh is a laugh of doubt because you think I won't do it. Like Sarah's laughter. Are we together now? And so, when God says, Sam, I'm going to change your life. Fear comes. What does fear do? He says, look, if God said he was going to give you a new shoe, it makes sense. God can raise somebody in Koinonia. But God says he's giving you a house by December. Is, is, God, is God stupid? That's fear talking to you. And you sit and say, I believe a shoe but I don't believe a house. Then you limit God like they did in the wilderness and only a shoe comes to you and comes to validate the limitation you placed on God. But that does not mean he could not give you a house. That does not mean he could not build a great destiny for you. Brothers and sisters, tonight as we trust God, we are going to do a very quick walk here. I want you to take away fear from your life fear of finances now that you know the whole recession is on people fear do you know one of the major reasons why people are poor i'm telling you this it's not because they are lazy it's because of the fear of it they think about lack so much they expect it it comes to them all wealthy people are courageous people they believe when God says, I'm going to bless you, you just sit and think and say, which of my uncles? Uncle James, poor. Uh, Uncle Sivanus, poor. The other, my father's younger brother, poor. Oh God, how are you going to now help me? You see that? My elder brother that was working in January, they now sacked him. God, I will 100,000 come. And God looks at you and says, with all you have been learning in Koinonia, this is how much you believe me? But there are people who say, Lord, whether I believe you or not, there's no option. So now I'm, I'm, I trust you. Do anything you can do. And all of a, a sudden, strangers will come and feed your flock. And say, I don't know you, sister. But while Koinonia was going on, you even, you just look at them and say, no, 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 don't be afraid. God just told me, please come and see me in my office tomorrow. And he said, what is this? He said, God gave me an instruction. Gone are the days where people get testimonies and say God told somebody to do this. You know there used to be times like that where God is. Now you don't hear those things because we don't believe it. We have brought carnality to our lives. You don't ever believe God directs men. We believe Satan sends men but we don't believe God directs men. I want you to live in that reality. 
where you believe reject fear my sister my brother hear me reject fear satan prevails over your life with fear brothers and sisters especially our gentlemen fear of establishment when will i get how much is one bag of nangotasement and you start calculating you are considering that's fear it does you are not planning that one is not planning planning is correct you are putting a plan to dance around it and rejoice but fear now say use your brain how much is one one plot of land you see that you now put it how much is two plots how much is a good car how much is dowry how much is is a, a furniture when you calculate everything you say according to my modest calculation is nine million and you laugh you just throw it away and say look let me just thank god you think that was an act of faith a man of faith says lord i do not know how the wind will come i don't know how the rain will come but i learned from scripture that you received for me power listen let me teach you there is a way you can frustrate satan you stagger not lord i don't know how it will happen but i know satan wants to bring something another scripture just wells up ah. but is it not god that you trusted yesterday that you fell remember not the former things that's why you must be full of the word to walk in faith that every time satan comes it is written shoots out of you like an arrow it is written it is written it is written ah, when you failed yesterday where was god and then he says for your shame i will give you double good reply for a spirit is it not you that everybody saw you and left you just looked at you and said you are a nobody and the bible says where men have deserted you so that no man passes through you i will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations with the limitation how are you going to go abroad are you not seeing if you ever if you go around the embassy they will so kick you out of that place and you sit down and remember joseph that he was in the prison and the bible says and the king not the king's aid the king himself sent for him kings can send for mean men and transform their lives hmm. when you are not full of the word when pressure pushes at you all that will come out is culture all that will come out is all of these things brothers and sisters god is going to do a quick work tonight is our last miracle service but i want you please and please i want you to join me believe this god he is believable he is reliable are you hearing what i'm saying god can change the stories of people please do not let anyone mock you oh we are in a strange season where god is changing people's lives overnight overnight this overnight dimension i know in my spirit that people are entering it overnight when you see someone who was already on his way to being successful it's not strange but somebody overnight is saul also one of the prophets what happened to him overnight saul i thought you were looking for your father's donkey and saul says i encountered samuel and an anointing came upon me and all of a sudden things started happening hallelujah god did something in my life today that almost brought tears out of my eyes i just sat down and i i almost fought tears and fought tears and i said god you are dependable you are truly dependable brothers and sisters i want to bring you to a realm where after you leave this you will never say one thing in church and say another you don't have to fight with people when people come with their sarcasm just keep quiet a settled reality if i die trusting him i die but god is able somebody say god is able say it again god is able all our problems as human beings can be classified into seven categories and only seven categories i won't go there because of time but the the challenges we are facing are not new it's from health am i right to money to breakthrough to deliverance to all of these things which one of them does not have a representation in the word of god is it your rent is it the time of famine are we together is it the breakthrough is it the limitations brothers and sisters my god is able my god is able i don't know about your own god but my god is able 
I believe him. And I'm not going to give room for the devil. Listen. Listen. This scientific Christianity, we must, we must rise beyond that realm of science and trust God. Tell me how the clouds stay without a pillar. Nobody has ever renovated the cloud to readjust. It stays by itself. Hmm. God spoke to Job. Tell me how you can give the rivers borders and say, Thus far have you come, no further shall you go. This is the God we serve. If you doubt if God can look men, look at my life. Look at my life. Brothers and sisters, I came tonight to challenge you to believe this God. You can sit down and continue arguing and laughing at those who are engaging their faith and turn and see that you are 40 years, 45, and there is no result whatsoever because it never happens by magic. Blessed is she that believes both in the open and in the secret. Blessed is she that believes for unto her alone there shall be a performance. This Christianity that you trust God in the open and then in the secret, you laugh, you are sarcastic. No. No. I believe him. I believe him. He has earned my trust. I believe him. I believe him. I believe him tonight to heal the sick. I believe him tonight to cast out devils. I believe him. Brothers and sisters, I know that you may have gone through several things. Some of us here, there are dreams that have died, you have buried it. But I want you to rise up again and to tell yourself, I will make it. Take it down for me. Let's sing one song before we disgrace the devil in this place. What's that song? Um, you don't have to worry. You know the song? And don't you be afraid Joy comes in the morning Troubles in the last away Listen to the song carefully There's a man in Jesus Who will wipe your tears away and if your heart is broken, Shabala Kataya, just lift your hands. Hey, oh. I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. I know that I can stand. No matter what comes no matter what may come my, my way. My life is in my your hands. Life with Jesus I can make it. With Jesus I can make it. With Jesus I can make it. With Him I know I can stand. With Him I know I can stand. No matter where I may come my way, my life is in Your hands. Hallelujah. Listen, there is no giving up in this kingdom. There is no. Did you hear what I said? There is no giving up in this kingdom. I want you to go back to the archives of the things you have left and say, Lord, I'm taking it back. That dream, that business. I started it by January, by March, I was crying. But at your word, I'm going back again. I'm going back. You are faithful. Let them laugh at you, you know. Hold on, please. I was studying, um, I think it was last week or so. I was just studying a video on the great inventors, the top was it 10 or 20 inventors in our world you know right from the time recorded history and i was reading through their lives one by one i only got to number five or six and i stopped and i told myself i said joshua selman don't you ever complain again i said my god why didn't they teach us the obstacles that these men had to cross why do we approach our lives as though something unusual happened go and read about their lives the history makers and see how they smash records when people told them you will not make it they said my life's goal is to prove to you and many of them were christians brothers and sisters the bible says that unto principalities and powers that it will be shown the manifold wisdom the manifold wisdom you don't look like it but that's why it's called his grace you don't look like it 
until his hand comes upon you and they say why you and you say go and ask him oh go and ask him go and ask him i'm motivating somebody and i'm speaking to you let me tell you something brothers and sisters god is dependable kill fear in your life when we start to pray i like you to pray with all your heart and as you pray i like you to trust god you may feel the pain of the sickness but as you pray you warn it and say just a few minutes i will only be patient with you for a few more minutes and you are leaving my body and living forever you may not be sick in your body but you have myriads of issues that only god can step in financial issues health issues i like you to bring it before the god of your salvation and say god i know you are able oh i don't know how you will do it witchcraft in your family demonic things and say lord it will end i know it i know it no job no destiny no joy he said i'm i'm before you i'm not before a herbalist i know my god is able open your mouth in one minute personally talk to him if you have to talk to him in your language go ahead those outside pray lord i believe you once again hallelujah i believe you once again the god of my salvation the god of jeshuron i believe you again for my family i believe you again for my academics i believe you again for my marriage i believe you again for my children i believe you for my finances it is still my year of triumph it is still my year of triumph it is still my year of triumph you are dependable you are reliable talk to him tonight is a night where my dreams are coming alive again that anointing that ministry that business in the name of jesus in spite of the mockery in spite of the shame in spite of the mistakes in spite of the setbacks in spite of the failure i arise like a giant rejoice not over me my enemies though i fall yet will i rise yet will i rise my god is still alive i know his name jesus the son of the living god pray i came to him the one who can change my life change my ministry You are here working miracles. I worship you. I worship you. You are here wiping every tear. I worship you. I worship you. We may miracle walk, promise me light in the darkness. That is who you are. We may we may miracle walk, promise give us light in the darkness. In the darkness. My God. Listen, listen to me. Don't ask how it will happen. When I stepped in, I heard, I heard, I think it was Mary. I have followed the issue of her dad. When some of us here are related to police people and all of that, I'm just using her story for an illustration. When she told me about the miracle that happened, I said, God, I fear you. 
because what was happening they were supposed to shoot and kill her dad that's the punishment for the supposed offense but when he steps in this my god god is not a man no god is not your neighbor god is not a landlord god is not a president he's not a governor god is not an ambassador god all by himself when he steps in all of a sudden he begins to shift things listen brothers and sisters hear me i want you to believe god to shift things this is this is my assignment believe him to push things in your life in one minute i like you to mention every challenge you came here with and say lord i believe you you will change it go ahead go ahead and pray lord i believe you you will change my financial situation lord i believe you you can send helpers my way men are still on earth lord i believe you you can lift me lord i believe you you can give my life speed if you came here for this service tonight pray pray i believe you Hello, him at of night. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him at of night. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him at of night. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hello, him out of night. Hello, him out of night. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom, thy will be done. Hello, him out of night. Out of night, out of night. hallelujah tonight is the last miracle service for the year please i don't want you to miss out on anything there is a very very strong anointing to bring performance performance listen 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 to me please now you see because of the nature of the miracle service some of you want I may not be able to call everybody one by one to speak to you the purpose of calling is just to give the holy spirit room to address as he brings but let me tell you this i've told you again and again calling people and talking and all of that is you can see how, how much time sometimes can be spent talking to one person the most important thing is that your faith is released to say lord turn my life around listen don't pray a cheap prayer tonight lord turn everything around 180 degrees turn it around turn it around turn it around let my life change it is within your power to make it happen hallelujah hallelujah now listen we're going to start tonight praying for the sick first there is a very strong healing anointing in this place and we're going to pray for the sick brothers and sisters 
I want you to believe God that any demonic thing that has latched onto you, it must leave you. Sickness is not the will of God, not near it. Are we together? Sickness is not the will of God. And shortly I'm going to be asking sick people to come out in all of the overflows. I want us to focus on sick people and pray. All the other things we can do a quick work, but it takes a lot of time to minister to the sick. And we're going to do this very fast. But I want you to maintain an attitude of prayer. But before then, I want you to lift your hands. Please, I want to pray. Lift your hands, I want to pray. Tonight is a night of breakthrough. We're coming there, but I have to pray. I have to pray for breakthrough. Hallelujah. Just keep your hands. Don't say anything. Don't do anything. Hallelujah. Keep your hands, please. Let's just walk with the Spirit of God. Breakthrough. The Lord is bringing breakthrough. Now, when, when you hear me say this, it's not just about those who fall under the anointing and shout. The falling under the anointing is just an evidence. It, it doesn't, it has totally nothing about, it's for you to receive. It doesn't mean that you see someone fall under the anointing and say, wow, this is the one God is touching. No, I'm teaching you how to receive. You receive by faith. It has nothing to do with falling or not falling. Are we together now? You receive by faith. What is breakthrough? The grace that smashes the limitations that stands before you so that you move forward. There is a grace that does that. I want to pray for you now. Jesus, I see fire. That's what I'm seeing. This is, this is, I'm, I don't know what kind of flame, what color this is now. But I'm seeing that grace inside and outside. Right now, I stretch my hands. It's coming on people right now. Receive it now. Don't worry. I stretch it. Just keep your hands lifted. Right now, it's coming on people. Overflow. One, two, three. Right up. Those online. It's a grace. Don't say anything. Just lift your hands. That grace is coming on people. I'm telling you, I'm seeing doors. These are like doors. I, I've seen this many times. But these are like chains, chains. Doors opening. I'm stretching my hands to you right now. Let's just allow God to do what he's doing. Shabakata. The breakthrough grace. The breaker anointing. Changing people's lives. Changing people's lives. Changing people's lives. Right now in the name of Jesus. Receive it all over this building. All over the overflows. All over the overflows. Enough is enough. Enough is enough of those challenges. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. Don't worry. We're going to do a, a quick walk. God is bringing something. He's still bringing breakthrough. And the Lord is telling me to tell those people that this grace is coming upon. I'm hearing in my spirit, December 2nd. This is from now till that time. December 2nd. A strange walk. Strange walk of the spirit strange work the breakthrough grace the breakthrough grace the breakthrough grace you don't have to bring them out we're going to ask the sick to come just hold them breakthrough grace i stretch my hands breakthrough grace there are families that must enter this anointing now enough is enough said the spirit of god there are families that must enter this anointing i provoke that grace let it cross borders in the spirit and go to families. Families, Shabbat Akata. Families. Lord, bring them into this grace. Families. The overflow three. I'm seeing God touch a lot of people there. This breakthrough anointing overflow three overflow three there is a strange move of the spirit happening there god is touching people this breakthrough anointing many of us need breakthrough we don't even know we need it impossibilities turning impossibilities turning breakthrough breakthrough let's just allow that grace land and we'll pray for the sick breakthrough you will be surprised to see the testimonies that will rise from it breakthrough i stretch my hands again breakthrough that grace that grace that grace shabata 
breakthrough that breakthrough grace I'm seeing a few people I'm seeing fire rising from their feet this is still breakthrough this is still breakthrough fire rising like from a man's legs upward fire at least 17 people I'm seeing scattered across in the name of Jesus let it rise Lord their destinies are at the mercy of these encounters let's just participate and allow the Lord do what he's doing Parakota Segedekata Sholeasa Mabreketea is a river that fire burning every chaff is a year of triumph. It must happen to you. It must happen to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now we are going to pray for the sick. I'm praying for the sick first because the Lord is going to move in a very, very prophetic way in this place tonight. And I want us to pray for the sick very fast. Now watch this. Please, if you are sick in your body, you came here for a miracle. Overflow. Um, let's see. Those in overflow, one. Those under the anointing, just let them be. Those in overflow, one. You are going to come out here. Um, okay. Inside. I'm part of overflow too. The ones at the roadside, maybe half of it. You can join them and come here. If you are trusting God for a terminal disease. Now, a terminal disease is something that is somewhat a death sentence. Please, whether you are in overflow one, two, or three. I want to lay hands on you by myself. A terminal disease. A termin that means something that is a death sentence. You know, maybe uh, HIV AIDS or a cancer or something like that. And please don't just come let's not crowd this place there are ministers that are going to be ministering overflow one come um out at your projector stand inside here come out part of overflow two join them and then the remaining go to the front of your projector outside overflow three i want all of you to come up and we're going to pray very very fast it's going to be a very quick walk god bless you quickly please come now you're coming out come and line up here quickly quickly overflow one please come out quickly while they are doing that i like us to begin to pray and say father let every sickness represented here bow to the name of the lord jesus lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and begin to pray let every sickness bow to the name of the lord your people have come to you the healer as we worship in your presence there is healing the Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing Jesus we believe Jesus listen I want you to believe God for miracles so that you can be perfectly whole to serve the Lord you must reject sickness from your life hallelujah praise the lord please pass away jimmy um let's see you go to overflow three you and promise overflow three i think there should be many more people if there are many more people there then we may add some other people um jimmy and promise will go to overflow three um pastor alpha you are at overflow two um Benga and Kenny, you'll be at Overflow 1 outside. Mike, you join um, whoever is you know, going to Overflow 2. I think that, that would be okay. Those online, release your faith. Go ahead, guys. In the name of Jesus. Father, we decree and declare 
let the corporate grace of the spirit flow in this place let there be signs and wonders through your holy son let there be miracles in the name of jesus let there be signs let there be wonders in jesus name i pray now please listen i don't want you to be distracted remain in that prayer mode as we pray for you i want you to check yourself i want you to do what you couldn't do even as you return to your seat and whilst they are praying god bless you guys go ahead no go fine praise the lord and as soon as we pray then we're going there will be massive deliverance and prophecy here i want us to be as fast as possible the worship team will set the atmosphere for us please everyone i want you to pray you may be seated where you are you are trusting god for the healing of a loved one let's trust the healing anointing and let's let's tap into what god is doing right now father we give you all the praise let there be miracles in the name of jesus christ Father, we thank you. Let there be miracles. Your power, oh, 
God. You have shown me so much mercy. Much more than I desire. Can we say the words you speak? Turn things around. Turn things around. Your arms stretched out. Has lifted me, Lord. You took them away. The chains and cords that held me back. My beautiful, you are taking away the shame, uh, taking away the pain. You make my life so Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Justina. Who is Justina? Justina. Justina. Time is gone. Justina. I'm hearing a name, Justina. We're going to enter a very strong session um, of deliverance and prophecy. We have to be very fast. I'm trying to conserve time. I'm hearing the name Justina. Justina. What's your name? Justina. You had this song that they just raised now. This song now, my beautifier, that's a song for you. That's what God is doing in your life. Stand up. You know how you make a woman up, maybe when there's wedding or there's a program. I'm looking at plenty ladies gathering around you, and they're doing all these things for your face. Hmm? This is, this is, are you married? God is opening the door of marriage for you. Hmm? In the name of Jesus Christ. Justina, Mama. Thank you, Mama. Justina, Mama. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray. My dear, look at me. Lift your hands. I'm seeing something like oil being put on you. I stretch my hands towards you, and I decree and declare: Let that anointing come upon your life, change your story forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Madam, what's your name? Ma? Justina. Justina. Do you know why I'm saying that? I'm looking in a vision and I'm seeing this woman. I'm seeing you holding a man. You are walking and later on I see you walking alone. Where's your husband? He's dead, son. He's dead. He's what? He's dead. Oh, he's dead, you mean? Yes, um... I want to pray for you. Don't be afraid. Because I'm seeing something that looks like the face of your husband calling you to come. That's not your husband. That's a demon spirit. I have to pray. The living and the dead don't have anything in common. Madam, I want to pray for you. Are we together now? Mm. So I'll lay my hands in the name of Jesus. I avert death from your life. In the name of Jesus. Everything bringing your husband's face to call you is not love. He's dead, he's gone. In the name of Jesus, I separate you. Mama, the Lord is going to, I, I've, I've known this madam and the case in their family, but there is a yoke of suffering. This is the first time God is showing me this. Wahala. And God is going to take it away. In the name of Jesus Christ. I know about her daughter's issue. I've been following up with the family. But I look at this woman and the Lord said there is a cause of hardship nothing that anybody does really really works it must turn later on and there are many people like that well soon i'm coming to you that thing must leave you i told you about this hardship hardship is one of the major reasons people don't smile hardship is more than poverty praise the lord my mind the name of jesus i pray for you may the lord himself locate you in jesus name i pray amen your name is Justina. My mother and my younger sister. 
Where is she? Where is she? Okay, your mother and your younger sister. In the name of Jesus. The prayer I want to pray for you now. I can't remember which miracle service, but please just help Mama. She's under the anointing. Get a chair or something. Someone donate your chair. Let her sit down and calm down. God is doing something in her family. Just keep her somewhere, please. I've prayed it before, but the Lord is saying I should tell you again that your family is entering a season of reward. It's entering a season of reward. It's entering a season of reward. The Lord himself will make it happen. I'm hearing affinity, 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 affinity. Please make sure it's your name. What's your name? The affinity I'm talking about is here somewhere. Um, you're younger. I'll pray for you. Affinity. This person is outside. Affinity. The Lord is telling me there's somebody outside. Affinity. If I could appear here as God, what I would tell you based on what I've seen is congratulations. God is going to do something in your life that will surprise you. How many prayer requests did you write? Six. Six. Go outside. Read number four very well. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you a finicky? Father, in the name of Jesus, visit this family. In the mighty name of Jesus. This lady, this one, my sister, you, looking at me, come. Please, let's, let's save time. I don't want us to stay here too long. Is this your first time here? You've been coming here. I have to pray for you. Where are you from? Edo State. I want to pray for you. Kai, what I'm seeing is not good. Hmm? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing... You know the horn of a calf. That's what I'm seeing on you. And we have to pray. I'm not saying you're a demon. You get what I'm saying? This is your miracle service is where God sets us free. Hold my hands. Hold it. Hold it with both of your hands. Hold it with both of your hands. Lord Jesus, please set this lady free. There are many things wrong, but the Lord is bringing order. In the name of Jesus Christ, I hold your hands now and I judge the horns of wickedness. The horns of wickedness. If I don't pray for you, your life is going to be full of suffering and strange disappointment from men. In the name of Jesus, Zebrakatos Calabriata, I command by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be deliverance for you now. I lay my hands on your head and I decree and declare that everything you are carrying that is not of the Christ, I command it to leave you now. And I pray that every legal access upon which the devil is attempting to destroy your life, I plead the blood on your behalf right now. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. Agnes, 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 Agnes. Is someone with that name? Agnes. 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 I wish I had time. Kai. Agnes. You are Agnes? You are what? Who is Agnes here? Who is Agnes? Your mother gave you Agnes. Who is that? Your name is Agnes. Your name is Agnes. I'll pray for you, but I'm seeing Agnes and the Lord your agnes your mother are they sisters yeah, who is this it's their wife but they are all sisters three of them are sisters who is this she's their brother's wife she, i'm looking at this and the lord is saying let's avert i'm looking at this picture it's empty but i'm saying rest in peace huh lord jesus by your mercy she lit she's alive I'm not a prophet of doom. I hope you understand. When I see this, is is the Lord trying to avert something. I avert tears from your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you that the Lord will help you. In Jesus' name. There is an impartation that God is giving you. God is bringing you into a dimension of the anointing. 
is is a strange level of grace that you are going to enter into and the lord is saying i should tell you that by this grace is going to lift you to a dimension that you have never seen it will make you a light i'm seeing a torchlight shining and the lord is saying this is your destiny to come with great illumination in the name of jesus your agnes two of you as i lay my hands on you whatever the issue is the lord is stepping in right now in the name of jesus christ 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 <sighs> jesus how time flies you see these are some of the things that before you know it just talking to people and it's already 10 and there is a lot to do right now because we're going to we're going to pray there are people who are going to go through very massive deliverance my sister this is the holding photos come come yes come now my dear Kai. Uh, i have to pray for you what i'm seeing who is this one again agnes madame your agnes i have to pray for you uh, uh, where are you coming from stretch your hands and pray that this woman will not die i kept looking at her because i'm seeing burial ceremony happening and i'm seeing her same face inside the coffin what is this thing with this spirit of death in the name of jesus christ please pray you may not know how it doesn't matter in the name of jesus we avert death hallelujah father i lay my hands on this madam and in the name of jesus we decree and declare that your grace will preserve her Amen. by the power of your spirit in the name of jesus my dear i want to pray for you are you married look at me look at me i want to pray for you there is serious bad luck in your life you know what they say bad luck bad luck that at least if some things are happening and other things are not happening but when there is nothing at all happening in your life it's not good in the name of jesus i lay my hands may the god of all grace may the god of mercy step in right now in the name of jesus christ by the power of god's grace come darling come this small girl i keep seeing this girl again and again god is going to use this girl in a very mighty way in a very mighty way believe me this forget that you are seeing a little girl god is going to use her in ways that will surprise people father use this lady beyond imagination in the name of jesus let her experience your grace and your power in the name of jesus your grace and your power in the name of jesus there was a man and a woman that were sitting in front here just where i'm standing like an elderly man one one gentleman and a lady where are they please look for them are you together come how are you sir can i pray for you your, your first time here this is your first time from where from abuja i want to pray for you god is going to change your story i saw this since when i came up it's just that now the lord said minister to them i don't know you never seen you but i want to pray for you let me tell you sir except the lord builds a house they labor in vain hmm? except the lord builds a house it doesn't mean i'm, I'm what do you do i'm seeing contract it will be like it's coming but then it will disappear is that true yes one of the major things that brought you here because you are very skilled and you are very good there was you are supposed to have been a multi-millionaire since last year there is a big contract that god would have given you but for some reason the thing just went even you is still surprising you how that thing did not work is that true you you thought you offended the person you worked with because i noticed it's like you are communicating then communication broke there's no communication. yes is that true i want to pray for you you believe god can change stories you heard what i said here what's your relationship oh you are the wife wife god is about to visit your family in say amen in remarkable ways you are an architect you believe what i'm telling you 
look, let me tell you something. You see, brothers and sisters, we're going to pray, but this thing eh, is not by power and by might. One. Two, it's not by hustling. Are we together? It's not by just God uses men, but blessings don't come from men. They come from God through men to you. I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. You have children? How many? Is that all? Don't be embarrassed. I usually will not. You saw that I kept quiet, Abby. Huh? Because I'm hearing the cry of a baby. And I'm seeing a hospital and I'm seeing it's a baby girl. This is what I'm seeing. You see, I'm not... <laughs> I hope I'm not messing two of you up. You have wonderful couples that came in peace for the issue of finances. But then, please don't be surprised whatever happens. God is in control. It's the will of God. Eh? Um, two children is not what... Because what I'm seeing, you will be surprised. I don't want to say this thing in public. You said you have two children. Okay, we'll see. And then we'll talk about that. Eh? So that we don't... Uh... But in the name of Jesus, hold my hands. The Lord is going to honor you. Father, lift this man up. In the name of Jesus, I release an anointing. Enter a strange level of favor. You came from Abuja in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, as I pray for you, the Lord is going to open doors of favor beyond your imagination. Step into that dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands. The guys outside are still there. We don't. Okay. Please, um, we have a few minutes and I want to pray seriously. I want to, God is going to be visiting people in very strange ways right now. Are we together? Please, I like your heart to be connected. There are everything that is sitting on anyone's destiny. I'm going to pray. And as I begin to pray, I want you to believe God for a miracle. A miracle. Come. The Lord keeps speaking to me about this lady's family. That this family, he will not rest until this family enters her rest. That's what the Lord is telling me. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands. Sharp to Listen, when we pray like this, it's not just some jamboree to see people manifest. No, that's not the idea. But that there are spirits. There are spirits. Lady, look at me shift please Osha. shift let me talk to that lady just tap her let her see me and noise her hold on just where you are lift your hands i'm seeing something crying and jumping out of you i stretch my hands let it leave you now and leave you forever in the name of jesus brothers and sisters let me tell you spirits are real they take advantage 90 percent of people's challenges are caused by the presence of spirits and when we pray like this much more than the manifestation it is god visiting you to separate you from the obstacles that's really it you may come with 10 prayer requests caused by one spirit and just that spirit leaving you you go back and you see testimonies are we together lift your hands i want to pray jesus at the count of three please i want you to shout jesus please just if you can just clear the aisles for me it's going to be very 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 serious right now few minutes please let's be patient this is the last miracle service and let god do what you will do now at the count of three i want you all to shout the name jesus we do this every time not as a ritual it is a name that is above all names that every power and every force that dares to sit upon anyone's life manipulating the outcomes of your physical results in the name of jesus as you shout jesus inside outside may that fire begin to locate men are you ready now at the count of three one two three I command judgment on every strange spirit in the name of Jesus. Please bring them out. Shabatos Kapaliata. Leketeketekete. Kebras Katos Shabaliata. Bekebros Kataliata. In the name of Jesus. 
I decree and I declare that every force sitting on anyone's destiny is time for you to let them go by the power that is in the name of Jesus inside and outside I command judgment on the wicked lift your hands one more time we're going to shout Jesus lift your hands at the count of three the spirits of ancestry sitting on families that you will not rise let them go now one two three go 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 i open the door and i command you to leave them now leave their destinies now lift your hands i want to pray the bible says he has redeemed us from every tribe and every tongue and every nation but there are spirits that are rejecting it listen i'm seeing people in dreams having all kinds of intercourse with strange spirits and you wake up in the morning with bad luck you go to bed and a spirit human or animal entities i'm seeing it at the count of three something will happen to you that will set you free one two three shout jesus let them go release their destinies now strangers of the night strangers of the night i command you let them go lift your hands i'm still praying we are still praying i don't know why god is showing me dreams dreams destiny is manipulated through dreams manipulated through dreams you are going to shout that name again fire will come on you and that will be the end of it everyone here whose dream has been hijacked and the devil is bringing wars to your life at the count of three be free now one two three be free now be free now be free now your hands I want to destroy patterns what happened to you happened to your brother what happened to your mother happened to your father they raped your mother they are now raping you they destroyed your father they are now destroying you no way in Christ the Bible says we have been separated let me tell you hold on many of you the power of God will come upon you from this prayer there are strange patterns abnormal coincidences that bring war to people's lives lift your hands when it's time to shout shout it with all your heart my god and my king i ask that you move like a mighty man and destroy patterns patterns at the count of three one two three be destroyed patterns patterns I curse you in the name of Jesus hallelujah please I like you to be sensitive there is a strong anointing God is doing a quick work very few minutes I don't know why God does it but he gives me that direction that as I begin to move around many things happen at once deliverance impartation several things just happen listen whatever your challenge is i want you to just it's not about me there are angelic just leave them that in the name of jesus as i walk around very fast god is going to step in and the power of god if there is anything unresolved as i pass your row i want you to believe the god of heaven is stepping stepping over your life right now stepping over your life in the name of jesus
that anything that is yet to be settled i stretch my hands now right now let the anointing of the holy ghost begin to settle people in the name of jesus i command it i command it everything everything that is not of god or this role everything i cost you i cost you now in the name of jesus i decree and i declare by the anointing of the holy ghost be free now be free in the name of jesus lift your hands i decree i decree i'm seeing chains chains on this road lose them now lose them now lose them now lose them now by the anointing of the holy spirit lose them now be sensitive as the anointing comes to you is bringing you out now in the name of jesus 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 hallelujah but listen those of you outside i want you to be sensitive our time is gone but we're going to be very fast as i pass your row many of you will see that the anointing of the spirit will come on you the lord is bringing breakthrough in the name of jesus right now let there be breakthrough from the front row right down as i walk through in the name of jesus i stretch my hands miracles breakthroughs right now by the anointing of the spirit receive it right now receive it i open closed doors god is opening someone's doors here a prayer i command doors be open doors be open just believe by faith doors be open doors be open as i come close to you the anointing of the holy ghost the anointing of the holy ghost is bringing that miracle right now let it be over let it be over i stretch my hands let it be over in the name of jesus let it be over in the name of jesus this last miracle service my sister your tears are over that's what the lord is saying your tears are over the mighty god is moving on your behalf please lift your hands i command it receive right now receive right now an anointing is coming on people receive right now believe by faith receive right now change their stories change their stories change their left and right left and right the holy ghost is touching people over over captivity over as i come to your role believe by faith i stretch my hands somebody in this road your destiny has been tied i lose you now i lose you now i lose you now the anointing of the spirit is coming on you wherever you are i lose you now receive it right now in the name of jesus bad luck bad luck leave him now over over forever over forever over the lord is asking me to stretch my hands on this road i stretch my hands receive that grace right now receive that grace receive that grace by the anointing of the spirit i cast this devil out of him now in the name of jesus there's somebody here the lord is saying open the door of marriage i open it i don't know who that is receive the anointing now receive the anointing now now please those of you in this will take note i'm seeing an anointing there is a great man of god that god is raising here out of this row this row here an anointing is coming on someone a strange grace please help them in the name of jesus you will never never be the same never be the same god is solving people's problems it has taken 10 years but i'm solving it the lord is saying it has taken 10 years but i'm solving your problem lady look at me the lord is wiping your tears that's what the lord is saying is over 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 by the spirit over by the spirit for your family over over by the spirit in the name of jesus please i want you to receive by faith believe someone is being healed here god is taking away a family sickness 
a pattern let it go now this row i'm standing on please believe release your faith in the name of jesus i'm standing here and i'm hearing a new song a new song god is giving some presence here a new song receive it right now in the name of jesus In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, please believe. My dear, look at me, lift your hands. This lady. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands here. I'm seeing the number 11. Lord, everyone that must enter their destiny here, I separate you from witchcraft now. 11 people. Right now. Sukatos kaparukatos. Ekretos Keliada. There's someone in the media stand around the media there. I'm seeing like lights just entered you and you are rising to a new dimension. I saw someone at the media stand. I've seen two people at the, the minister's row. The minister's row. The Lord is touching them. Two people. A strange anointing for speed. I'm stretching my hands here right now. And in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. I decree and declare. Step into that dimension of your destiny. Hallelujah. Please everyone, very quickly, our time is up. I want you to lift your prayer request. Pass it to the last person quickly. Quickly, please. Our time is up. Let's, let's just be, please be patient with me. We'll be done in a jiffy, but we need to do this a very quick walk. It doesn't matter where I stand. I don't have to stand in front. Just leave, please ushers very quickly. Coordinate yourselves and collect them just lift it pass it to the last person and that last person lift it up please lift it up so that the ushers can collect everyone say after me in the name of jesus say in the name of jesus i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit that between now and the end of this year every prophetic word over my life must come to pass lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice don't look at me pray i decree and i declare that between now and december every prophetic word that has been decreed every prophetic word that has been decreed must come to pass every prophetic word that has been decreed Where the ushers they should collect you. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Every prophetic word. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare the grace for extraordinary results. I receive it right now. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. As you are praying, you are receiving it. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare. Please pray it. Pray it with faith. A manifestation. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare. Every human agent. That needs to partner with God. To take me to the place of destiny. I call you into my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and declare. In the name of Jesus. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Every dormant gift. Every dormant ability. Within me. 
that should bless me but it's not yet activated i activate it by the anointing lift your voice and pray every dormant gift every ability every dormant gift every ability by the anointing of the holy ghost activated say in the name of jesus the grace for supernatural direction into the will of god for my life i receive that grace now open your mouth and pray the grace for direction into the accurate will of god two more prayer points say in the name of jesus i take authority over the spirit of fear in my life in my family i decree and declare that i no longer fear lift your voice and pray i curse the spirit of fear fear of the future fear of death fear of sickness last prayer point in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus every dimension of the anointing that must come upon me for the next season i open up my spirit and i receive it into my life lift your voice and pray the anointing is the difference The anointing is a difference. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, I want you to stretch your hands. You've heard the testimonies that come from this. This is a mystery that God gave those online i want you to stretch your hands from whatever nation of the world you're connecting from just whether it's your device whatever just believe by faith families gather together and we're here praying we're believing god the god of all flesh i want you to stretch your hands here as i bow my knees to the god of heaven and pray on these requests in the name of jesus christ all i want you to be saying is lord everything i've dropped here i pick it up as a testimony are we together open your mouth and pray i decree and declare in the name of jesus please make sure all the requests are here make sure that the requests are here please pray I pick it up as testimonies. Are you praying? Lekata prakatosh. Lekata pakoroto soto prekete shakata kata parakatos. Turn it around, oh God. Turn it around, oh God. Impossible situations. 
turn it around oh god hallelujah in the name of jesus the son of the living god i decree and declare that the same way i'm stepping on this request that's how you rise above every challenge here no matter how impossible the situation is i agree with you whether it is academic career marital financial whatever it is we release our faith to the god of all flesh and we command that the requests are turned to testimonies someone is saying god can you do it for me before december yes sir yes sir yes sir i decree and declare this is what the lord is ministering to me someone is saying lord i know you would do it but can you do it before december in the name of jesus may my god surprise you there are issues here that ordinarily would take years to be done but in the name of jesus before this year listen you will not enter 2018 with this request in the name of jesus i decree and declare i know you didn't apply for the job and you've been hearing people say they get jobs supernatural i don't know whether you believe it or not but i stand on your request and i release a miracle for you in the name of jesus christ i release a miracle for you please i want you to receive it as i speak over your finances this finance thing you see there is the prophetic dimension of wealth don't ever join any naysayer to believe that when god helps you financially it doesn't advance your life people who talk those things are either ignorant or wicked are we together many people are grounded almost forever purely because of finances this finance thing can punish you and disgrace you again and again i decree and declare every financial shame represented in anyone's life here by prophecy in the name of jesus may your story change like day and night if there is any one of you that wrote any request that has to do with a financial miracle i stand in the name of jesus my god and my king the one who has helped this ministry before december ending in the name of jesus I put laughter in your mouth <laughs> hallelujah Mary said how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man if you are here trusting God for the fruit of the womb before this year ends you will confirm that you are already pregnant in the name of Jesus listen I'm prophesying for anybody here you have prepared yourself but this job thing has refused to come in the name of Jesus whether there is space or not one is created here and you are put there in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and I declare by the spirit of the living God everyone in need of direction clear direction that you are saying lord where do i settle where do i go to do i do business do i get a job in the name of jesus before this weekend wraps up in the dream of a night may my god come to you and visit you In the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God I pray for you the visions you saw by January not one of them has happened now and you are wondering I'm seeing someone you have a list of 10 things not prayer requests 
10 things that you agreed with God at the beginning of this year, not one has happened. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, all 10 must happen before the end of this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Some of us are in situations where you cannot help yourself. You need a helper. This is a, a helper. Somebody to just come and lift you. I don't know who taught you that God doesn't send men to help men. Listen, let me tell you. This is a wicked world where nobody helps you on his own. But my brother, my sister, when God points you and asks men to help you, to surprise you, the God who has helped me, I have seen small of God's grace in this help. Oh, I pray for you, Ebenezer, the one that helps men. May my God help you. May my God help your ministry. May my God help your business. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, as you're standing here, everything caused struggle in your life. You are waving it goodbye tonight in the name of Jesus. Listen, I know some of you don't believe it. That's why you will not see it. But for those who believe it, I say it again. That anything caused struggle in the name of Jesus Christ. The same way when the sun comes out, it dries the water that is on a wet cloth. I pray that may God arise and wipe every tears. Anyone here saying, oh God, don't just visit me alone. Come through for my family. I pray for you. There are families, the kind of breakthrough they need is only God that can give them. I ask that God to give them now. In the name of Jesus Christ. All of you here in business, I prophesy to you. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I don't care what you are doing provided it's in righteousness. I decree and declare the grace that makes things succeed. Let it come upon the works of your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. If there is anyone here or any of your loved ones due for promotion and they've been sitting on their promotion because of tribal sentiments, I decree and declare like the Chronicles was opened by King Ahasuerus and Mordecai was lifted overnight. I declare that may God use men to lift your people to their rightful place. Every force that has covered anyone's glory here. You keep seeing things in the spirit but they never manifest. I decree upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Between now and the end of the year. May the God of all grace surprise you. If there is anything in your life that is missing. Missing script missing result missing brother missing sister missing whatever it is in the name of jesus just as samuel prophesied and the donkey went back to the house of kish i command everything that has left you to return to you two more prophetic words and we're done The Lord is still asking me to pray over the power to prosper. I know that many of you, this is not some prosperity jargon. Just believe this thing, trust God, settle it and do other important kingdom things. I pray for you in the name of Jesus, by the God who has helped this ministry. I pray there is, there is an exact anointing that prospers men. Where in one day, God can give you someone's salary of a lifetime. I pray for you. If you have never seen that dimension of favor, I stretch my hands to you. May it happen in your life now. You will wake up in the morning and they will hand you landed properties. By the favor of God.
if there is any family here that as a family with matured grown-up children you are still staying in a rented apartment i decree and declare you may not know how it will happen but by the finger of god i lift you to your own place If there is any human being partnering with darkness to see that you will not see 2018 in the name of Jesus I stand here may the sword of judgment fall on them now <laughs> hallelujah listen to me if there is anything that according to God's calendar should have entered your life but was delayed through whatever reason i'm saying it now in the name of the lord god almighty whom i serve between now and december an avalanche of pending miracles released to you hear me there are people who god will give business ideas overnight and by the end of this year you'll be feeding others in the name of jesus may the god i serve take hardship out of your life may the god that i serve take sorrow out of your life may the god that i serve take up today down tomorrow from your life finally i pray for your spiritual life please be sensitive i decree and i declare if your spiritual life dies everything dies i stretch my hands a dimension of the gift of the spirit that you are trusting god for for a long time and has not come upon your life a dimension of the anointing you have trusted god for but has not come upon your life a dimension of prayer you have trusted god for and has not yet come upon your life a dimension of revelation and illumination you are trusting God for and has not come upon your life a dimension of influence in the spirit visions revelations the prophetic as I stretch my hands let there be a distribution of these graces now receive it right now let there be a distribution of these graces now hear me this is the last miracle service and i decree and declare to you everything that represents triumph as declared by the mouth of god almighty i command and i declare that the angel that was sent to signify this prophetic word may they confirm that word in your life hallelujah that's what my song will be that's what my song will be that's what my song will be hallelujah that's what my song will be that's what my song will be Sing it one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. Our time is gone, but this is our last. This is not the last service, it's only the last miracle service now very quickly please keep standing everyone there are people standing here this is your last miracle service we're not going to have any other one for this year we have about two three more services and we're done completely as a ministry for the year you are right here and the lord is speaking to you and saying son daughter you need to make your ways right with me don't argue it you're overflow one overflow two 
you know overflow three and anywhere connecting with us online wherever you are you're rededicating your life to jesus or you are making that decision for the first time please our time is up but then i cannot but give you an opportunity to truly truly receive jesus wherever you are don't be ashamed leave your seat very quickly i'm counting one to five for the sake of time make your way to the front right now let's honor them as they come one god bless you as you come god bless you as you come there should be many people coming there should be many people i expect so many people coming two clear the way for those coming from overflow two overflow three because of your distance just walk to the front of your projector screen overflow three because of time just walk to the front of your projector screen three someone here is saying lord i'm tired of everything failing tired i'm handing everything to you four jesus is still speaking to people make your way to the front god bless you god bless you one more count and we're done is someone still coming win that war tonight and run to jesus christ the bible says whoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away hallelujah god bless you lift your hands those of you in front and those connecting online wherever you are in the silence of your room your phone your device wherever i want you to just believe with me lift your hands and say this after me say it sincerely don't just recite it as a poem in the name of jesus say after me lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you shed your blood for me tonight i receive you truly and sincerely as my lord and my savior I decree and I declare that I have eternal life in my spirit. Please help the person under the anointing. And I declare that the spirit of God lives in me. The grace to live a victorious life is mine right now in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. I stretch my hands, the anointing of the spirit smashing away every challenge in everyone's life those of you standing i decree that every legal access the devil has over your life i decree and declare that your sins are forgiven a new chapter is opened over your destiny i release you to a life of victory a life of power and effective christian life in the name of jesus may the grace of god speak for you in jesus name i pray amen and amen god bless you I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands all of you there is a gentleman waving his hands please just follow this gentleman and they will um, communicate a few details to you and you'll be back to your seat let's honor god as they go thank you Jesus. hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.